the library was in Stockport and then it's moved to here six months ago. Stockport was a lovely site, but there was a problem with the roof and it was very costly to put it right. Um, this is a major facility for RNIB, um, so it was weighing up the cost of repairing the roof, keeping the library here, moving it here, and it was more cost effective to move it here going forward, so that's what we did. We already had the warehouse environment in Peterborough and we already operated a mail order operation for Peterborough because um, we do a lot of products, and, um, games and equipment, especially adaptive for blind people. It all comes out of this warehouse and we worked out that with a bit of moving around stuff we could get the library collection in. We started this project about two years ago and the scheme evolved. Successful schemes like this evolve. Uh, it's a cliche, working in a partnership it is. If you're not just a supplier and a, a, a customer, you work as a team. So it was all about the little details that make the whole library work for them. We had 25,000 titles in Braille, about that, and, and of course we're adding all the time. But 25,000 titles doesn't seem a lot, but the average Braille book is six volumes. We've got three copies of each title, so you work it out. Vikram Seth, Suitable Boy, 46 volumes, three times. That's a lot of volumes of Braille. And I think that was the other challenge for Link 51. These books were much bigger and a different, different proportion than the average paperback or hardback you'd have in a public library. If it's important to the client, it needs to be important to us. I wanted to know what each Braille book was, because there are different collections in here, as you've heard. And why do they have each type? Why do they need to store them in a certain way? And so we spent quite a lot of time walking around Stockport, assessing what was there and looking at it and understanding what those books were. More's the point, what they meant to R&IB, because that helps location, things like that, and saying, well, yes, certain things do need to be downstairs because they're accessed faster more popular items, no difference to going into a, a store really. But without that level of understanding, then I don't believe we would do justice to planning a layout. If this service failed on day one, if these roller stacking didn't move, if the company went bankrupt before they could complete, it would be tragic for, for Braille readers. And I think people forget that blind and partially sighted people can be very isolated. It's not easy for them to travel and get out. So yes, it was very important that, that the timetable, we stuck to the timetable, that we were able to tell the readers when we were open and that the book started to go out again. When we did the calculations on the amount of stock we'd need to move and how it needed to be filed and how much growth we'd need to build in, we worked out the only way we could do it is by putting in a mezzanine floor. And if you notice up here, all this, the shelving is roller racking to get more books in. Because we have to have growth for at least two years. So yeah, it's space. We had to put a mezzanine in. The warehouse still needed their space. So we put the mezzanine in, put everything on roller racking to, get, to, to make the best use of the space. As we discovered we wanted to build this multi-tier structure of, of two levels, you can imagine that puts a huge load on the warehouse floor. So it becomes incumbent on us to professionally advise a client in saying, well, we need to check that your floor will take that load. And when it doesn't, this is what can be done about it. So we start from the floor up in saying, yes, actually the floor does need extra piling to support the loads going on it. Ah, now we've got a mezzanine floor that's going to need fire cladding to, to uh, fit with law, with civil law. That means it's going to need smoke detection. That means it needs, and all these things add up to the project. The shelving is the last part of the equation. And our, where we're good is that we can hold a client's hand right the way through every bit of that process, whether it be advising on civil engineering, using partners that we work with and have worked with for years, um, fitting lifts, which we've done before, using the same suppliers as we work with here, um, right the way through to where do you buy your labels from to put on the end of the rack so that you can label it. So every, every single stage of that we would advise of what the options are, not this is what you, you're going to get, um, these are the options available to you, what would you like us to do? So that's where we work from. 
There were challenges with the floor because piling a floor means that you have to extract concrete from the existing structure. You've got to get that out of the building and in this building it's already a clean environment so how do you take that muck out of the building um, with care and equally piling a floor is, is not a clean operation, it's a dirty operation and all those operations plus building the floor and doing the lighting and the shelving and all the other things had to be done in a working warehouse because although this is a library it forms part of a big warehouse operation so the, the challenges are more to do with getting the material in uh, in sequence in the time scale that's been agreed uh, whilst maintaining a clean environment for people to, to work in. They've been very 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 good did a fantastic job for us held our hands through a lot of it because a lot of the sizing of the stock um, and the amount of linear meters of shelving we'd need and the fact we'd need you know how much mobile racking we need how much static racking we need we worked out with them really so they held our hands right through the entire process which was very good and they even recommended who we should use to move the stock itself which was another plus because the, the people who moved the stock down were also very very good so it, it went extremely well. I've never worked so hard in all my life, mentally and physically. Uh, it was just incredible, because we were also moving the archive. So I was here, I was in London, I was unpacking, I was checking plans, and it, a lot rested on it. If we didn't get this right, the thing would fail. So it was ve it's very important. And a book that is out of place is a lost book as well. We've got very dependent, blind people who use the service and it was very important to make sure we got it right and there wasn't really any major disruption to that service for them and we did a lot around the comms around the project to make sure they knew exactly what was going on at any stage because it was so complex because we were putting in the mezzanine floor because we were putting in uh, rolling and static racking because we had to size it because we had to move the computer systems down at the same time and make sure that they would run and we recruited a new dispatch team for down here there was quite a lot going on really. Some customers were worried about this because they've always known the library, the Braille library was in Stockport. So the communications were important but it was also so important to deliver on time so that those customers' fears were, not, were, were put to one side and the service continued. I'm very proud of it and I'm proud of the association with the client because they're proud of, of the fact that they place their faith in Link and we delivered. I would recommend Link 51 again. I did enjoy working with them. They were, they were good to work with and they delivered. What more could I ask for? Well?